want everybody to look up for a second and just look up front, not at me, but just look up front. A few weeks ago, Amy and I went to see the Newsboys and the final song, which was so appropriate, was the cross has the final word. Gives me cold chills just to think about it. The cross has the final word. We're going to talk tonight about what is your Goliath? What is your Goliath? Uh, we didn't put scripture up on the board. You, you pretty much know the story of David and Goliath. We're going to be in 1 Samuel 17. If you want to go there, but you don't have to, I, I'm going to do something a little different tonight. Usually when I preach from one chapter or one large section of a chapter, I read it from beginning to end. But this story is kind of long for one chapter. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to highlight the parts that I want to use in my points that I'm going to make. So I take these sermons when I'm able to preach and I use them on my podcast. And so I feel kind of bad that I'm not going to read the whole thing. And with my podcast, I can edit things in and edit things out. So if I twist my tongue too terribly bad and say something really embarrassing, I could edit that out. Uh, but I may just go ahead and edit in reading of the full chapter because I don't know where that's going to be heard and somebody might need to hear the whole story of David and Goliath um, that doesn't know it like we would. Father God, I come to you just now as I get ready to get started and I thank you for being here with us through your Holy Spirit. And Father, we just welcome him in with open arms tonight. And while there's just a few of us here, we know, Father, that uh, as we mentioned earlier, whether two or three are gathered together, then you are here with us. And so we thank you for that promise. We thank you for the word. We thank you for the example that David was. And um, we even thank you for Goliath in this situation, Father. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. The first thing I want to ask you in point number one is... What is your obstacle in life? Now, you may have several obstacles in your life, but I want you to think about what is the biggest obstacle that you have. And I say it that way because as we look at David in this story, he had a big obstacle, right? In verses 4 through 7, it says, Chapter 17 of First Samuel. And a champion went out from the camp of the Philistines named Goliath from Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. He had a bronze helmet on his head and he was armed with a coat of mail. And the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of bronze. And he had a bronze armor on his legs and bronze javelin between his shoulders now the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam, and his iron spearhead weighed 600 shekels, and a silver bearer went before him. That was quite an obstacle that we'll see later. An obstacle for the, the army of Israel at that point in time, but later on a huge obstacle for David. I read that in the Hebrew text, it's long been accepted that uh, Goliath where it says he's six cubits and one span. They say a cubit is like 18 inches and then a span uh, equal to six. So if you do the math, and I took the word for it, I didn't sit there and multiply it out, it, it comes out to about nine feet, six inches tall. That's a big obstacle, isn't it? What's your obstacle? If we had a church full of people here tonight, and, and I said that, there would be some people that would say, my obstacle is I had a bad childhood. I can't get past the fact that my mom and dad didn't love me like I ought to have been loved. And there might be some people with an obstacle of, 
my marriage isn't what it needs to be. I'm on drugs. I'm addicted to alcohol. Whatever the obstacle is, it's probably a big one. Just like David saw the big obstacle in his way. Point number two is, what is your reaction to that obstacle in your life? In verse 11, it says, When Saul and all Israel heard these words of the Palestine, of the Philistine, well, let me just say that again. When Saul and all Israel heard these words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. Their reaction to this obstacle was fear. And you know, that's pretty normal, isn't it? When we have obstacles in our life, sometimes it scares us to death. Sometimes we have no idea how to react. Much like the army here. They didn't say, well, how dare he talk about our God like that? How dare he, he make fun of us? They were scared. You ever been up against a bully? Bully's tactics is to scare people, isn't it? It's not necessarily to beat people up. A bully wants you to think they're going to beat you up. And then they've won, right? Because they, they have the power and they didn't even have to do nothing. Because you're scared because they're just so tough. And that's what Goliath was doing. Nine feet, six inches tall. And he had the power. Israel had the fear. That's what their reaction was. The third point is, what is your plan of attack? And if we skip way far into this story, we look at what David's plan of attack was. Verse 45 says, Then David said to the Philistine, You come to me with a sword, with a spear, and with a javelin. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you and take your head from you. And this day I will give the carcasses of the camp of the Philistines to the birds of the air and the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Then all this assembly shall know that the Lord does not save with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and He will give it unto you or into our hands. Go back to that obstacle in your life. And maybe your reaction was fear, or maybe your reaction was denial. It's not really a problem. My wife and I get along perfect. And you know inside that that's just not true. Or maybe you don't know that it's not true. But whatever that is, you got to have a plan of attack if you, if you want to conquer it. Think about stories we've seen on TV and different things. About Think about Opie Taylor. and He, he planned to take on that guy that was giving him a hard time. And you got to have a plan of attack. And David had a plan of attack here. The plan of attack was to give it to God. The plan of attack could have been in all the body armor that Saul had given him to put on. It could have been in all of the, the power of having a, uh, the army of Israel behind you. All of that could have been the plan of attack. But David was wise beyond his years here. David was a young man at this time. I don't know if you can really call him a man. He was very young. Wise beyond his years because he didn't ask his brothers who were in the army to go out in front of him. Goliath had somebody out in front of him. Isn't that what we read? He didn't ask his brothers to do that. He didn't say, Saul, give me the best squad of men that you have to go in and, and soften up the giant. And then I'll take care of it from there. He went to God. Not Saul, 
Not his brothers, not the army. He went to God and he said, this day the Lord will deliver you into my hand. He was confident in his plan of attack. You know, he didn't sit down and draw out a big long sermon outline. He just went to the Lord. And he was confident. He didn't just say, I'm going to win this fight. He said, I'm going to cut your head off. And I'm going to feed it to the birds and the wild animals. He was confident. And we need to be the same. When we have them obstacles in our life, we need to believe. We had a healing service here this morning. And I hope that you believe that those people that were standing up here that needed a healing are healed right now. I guarantee you none of them have been to the doctor this afternoon. But they're healed right now. And if you don't believe that, you need to get deeper in your relationship with God. And I'm not putting you down. I'm just saying we've got to get to the point where we believe, we expect God to deliver the problem in our hand and that we can chop that problem's head right off and feed it to the birds. That's where we need to be. We need to be so confident in our relationship with God that we expect those things. Now some people might say that sounds arrogant and what do you do when God... Just keep believing. Just keep believing. Just keep believing. We have, we have to have faith. And Rob preached that so well this morning. we got to have the faith. What else can you do if your brother is sitting here in a pew and he is going to die of cancer without a miracle of God? Then you've got to have faith. And Adam got up here two or three weeks ago and cried and said, I don't want my brother to die. Roberta's about to tear up right here in front of me. She don't want to lose Reggie. Reggie's been healed in the name of Jesus. He's going to go up to the VA and they're going to say, what's wrong with him? Do you believe? I believe not because it's the VA. And not because they don't know what they're doing or what they're looking for. They're going to be looking for something that was there that's not there. And we need to be confident just like David was. The plan of attack was to give it to God. But what is your response? Point four. What is your response from God? Now, I I worded that that way on purpose. Because I could have said, what is God's response? But I want to know what your response is when you've heard from God. When you've made that battle plan and God has told you that he's going to deliver that Philistine into your hand, what is your response? Is it, well, I don't know. I I believe that God performs miracles, but he's nine feet, six inches tall. You know, we got a mighty God, but that's bigger than anybody that plays in the NBA. That makes Shaquille O'Neal look like a midget. So I, you know, God can move a mountain, but this mountain's got body armor that nobody can pierce. So what is your response from what God has said? If we look at verses 48 through 50, it says this. So it was when the Philistine arose and came and drew near to meet David that David hurried and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. Then David put his hand in his bag and took out a stone and he slung it and struck the Philistine in his forehead so that the stone sank into his forehead and he fell on his face to the earth. Woo, that's good stuff. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone and struck the Philistine and killed him. 
but there was no sword in the hand of David. David's response wasn't chickening out at the very end. That would have been understandable. Do you you care where I'm coming from? That would have been understandable to everyone that was behind him. But you know who was in front of him? It was God. And that wasn't understandable to God. The only thing that was understandable to God was to do what only God can do. That's what was understandable to God. If if you've read the story back in the first part of the chapter, David's brothers were upset that he was even there. You know they didn't believe that he could do anything. As a matter of fact, one of them made fun of him and said, them few animals that you take care of out in the, the wilderness or something to that effect. Yeah, Get out of here. You're just a kid. David's response from what God had told him was, I can do all things through Christ who is in me. Is that our response to that obstacle? Is that a person's response that is hooked on heroin that people say, there's no way you can get off of that. You're going to be that way for the rest of your life. My God can do all things. That's what my God can do. That's what your God can do. You you need to know beyond a shadow of a doubt, that whatever that obstacle is, nine feet, six inches tall, that God can handle it. And God handled this for David in a way that had to have shocked everybody that was behind him. Because think, Saul had offered him all of his gear. He looked out and we read earlier everything that Goliath had on him. You know, there wasn't much of a spot that David could hit with a rock to kill Goliath. Do you realize it had to be a perfect shot with a sling? And if he missed, guess what Goliath was going to do? He was going to break him in half. I love it. I love when people are bold for the Lord. David just stepped right up. He took that. He didn't look at him like, well, that's an insurmountable task. Maybe I'll just toss it up there and then I'll run because that's all I got to do. I'll run after I hit him and and we'll, we'll make this into a big joke. I'll make fun of. David didn't do that. He went up there right in the forehead. The only place he could hit him. To hurt him. And I like the way the scripture said, Goliath fell on his face. Woo. (laughs) You think David's chest bumped out a little bit? It probably did, but you know what I think he really did? I think he may have bowed down. It doesn't say this, but I think he may have bowed down and said, Thank you, Lord. Because without you, that, that giant that's laying face down right there would have had no problem I would have been an appetizer for him without you God I'm nothing but because you were with me that giant all nine feet six inches of him is laying face down and everybody that was behind me that thought there was no way that I could succeed has just saw a young guy who was built very well but it was no match for the giant Overcome the greatest obstacle that he had ever seen in his life. Think about it. Go back to the beginning. What is the biggest obstacle in your life? God help David. Why wouldn't he help you? David was just a man. Right? So if God would help David, why wouldn't he help us today? The same as... When we read this morning about all the miracles and the healings that Jesus did when he was here, and he sent his disciples out, 12 ordinary men, he sent them out to do the same things, to lay hands on, to heal. 
If those ordinary men could do that, why can't we do that today? The answer is we can through Jesus Christ. We can't on our own power. But the Holy Spirit that dwells in us is God. God wins. So with the Holy Spirit in us, we can do it. David did it. We can do it. But what is your reaction to God's solution? God's solution was that the the giant fell face first. God's solution was that David would cut his head off. And if we look in verses 51, and then we're going to skip to 54, it says, Therefore David ran and stood over the Philistine, took his sword and drew it out of its sheath, and killed him and cut off his head with it. And when the Philistines saw that their champion was dead, what did they do? They fled. They turned tail and ran. They were so confident five minutes ago. Five minutes later, they're turning, they're running for their lives. If, if David could kill a giant, we better get out of here because we ain't nothing like a giant. The Philistines were like the small problems we have in life. They looked at that big problem and it, it, God, big problem, God, big problem. I'm thinking it didn't even take them that long. They just, whoo, they're out of there. Verse 54 says this, And David took the head of the Philistine and brought it to Jerusalem, but he put his armor in his tent. He took the head of the Philistine. Now, I struggle a lot of times with talking about things that I'm able to do in the ministry. Because I... I worry about whether it sounds like I'm bragging or whether I'm taking credit for something that really belongs to God. But when I look at a podcast that I do from my living room or my bedroom studio in a little tiny duplex and hear that it's being heard in Egypt, in Indonesia, that's God. That's not Ed. But if God could take me, I have a high school education. I'm not a college graduate. I'm nobody special. But because God dwells within me, I can do all things through Him who strengthens me. I got a note yesterday. A lady that has been affected by my online ministry... Six years ago, her daddy passed away. And at that point in time, my podcast was fairly interactive with chat room, uh, a lot of people participating. And so one night she's in there in the chat room and tells me that her daddy passed away that day. And I sent her a message and I said, send me his obituary and I'll read his obituary on the show tonight and we'll pray for your family. Two days ago, I forgot all about that. I had no memory of doing... I've done probably a thousand shows since that point in time. Forgot all about it. Her sister died two days ago. I sent her a message that said, uh, Hugs to you and your husband, Raymond. And and that's how I knew her. I knew her husband first. And they got married uh, later in life. And she... I said, hugs to you and Raymond and prayers for all of you and the rest of your family. I just thought she'd maybe hit a like or a love and she wrote back a response. And said, six years ago, you read my daddy's obituary on your show. And that meant something to me. And I know that when my sister got to heaven, daddy was there to to welcome her in. And she, does, she said, you would not believe how comforting that is to me today. That gives me affirmation that God... See, I've never met this lady. I've never seen her in person. She lives in Ohio. They used to live somewhere at Washington State or something like that. I've never even met these people. But God uses little old me, little old David... 
And guess what? I need sometimes to stand up and say, look what God did through this ministry. David took the head of Goliath and went to Jerusalem and showed them what God could do. Not what David could do, because he already knew that it was just him, Goliath takes care of probably as many Israelites as Goliath wants to. And in your life, when God does something wonderful, when Reggie is healed, not when, but since Reggie is healed, let me get it right, you need to let people know that. Look, look at what a testimony Reggie is. He had cancer, now he's cancer free. The doctors have no idea how that happened. He hadn't even started his treatments yet. Has he started Hadn't started his treatments yet. And it's gone. Amen. We need to brag about that. That's not being self-centered. That's talking about what a mighty God we serve. Yes. We should be shouting some things from the rooftop when we sit back and think, well, you know, they're just going to make fun of me. They're just going to laugh behind my back. Let them laugh. Let them laugh because we need, to we need to promote God. Think about all the things that are promoted in this world. Go home tonight. Well, don't go home tonight and turn TV on and watch commercials. But look at the things that are promoted. We don't promote God that way, do we? As a matter of fact, there are times in the Super Bowl, which... Some people watch the Super Bowl just to see the ads that are in the Super Bowl because that's, you know, they cost millions of dollars for a 30 second ad. And they watch to see that. And there's been religious ads that have been rejected from the Super Bowl because they were religious ads. Back in the day, there was a guy that stood up in the stands. Before Tim Tebow used to wear it on his eye patches. And he held up a sign that said John 3.16. And he always made sure he got on the camera. One person did that. And millions saw it. Millions knew what it was, but there was likely millions that had no idea what John 3.16 was. And, and this was probably before the time that Google existed. So, but if you did something like that today, hey Siri, what is John 3.16? And Siri would come across the phone and say, John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son that whoever believed in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. See, that guy that held up the John 3.16 used Siri, who in turn witnessed to several million people. Think about this. In David's day, even in the day that Jesus walked this earth, Jesus couldn't stand and do any of the stories that it was told and then find out about it on the other side of the world that day or live. We've got so much at our disposal to reach the lost and sometimes we just take that for granted. Our God is a mighty God. So what is your biggest obstacle? I want you to share this story with somebody this week. Somebody that's going through something really tough. What, what's their biggest obstacle? And I want you to tell them about David. And I want you to tell them that giant was nine feet, six inches tall. I want them to understand that there was no way possible that David can do anything to that giant. But he did. The same God that helped David is the same God that sent his son to that cross right there. No different. He had the same power yesterday that he has today. And if we live till tomorrow, he'll have that same power tomorrow. The same one that put Goliath face down because God did it. David was the person that he used, but God did it. And the God that put that giant on his face 
can take care of your problem. So share that with somebody this week. Somebody needs to hear that. Maybe you needed to hear that. But share it with some. We got to share the love of God. We got to share the power of God. We got to share the great things that God does. God heals somebody from a heroin addiction. People need to know that. Because we got a problem in this community. But it's not a problem that God can't solve. That's, that's probably our community's Goliath right now, is the opioid problem. God can take it on. I can just see God shrugging and saying, why are they worried? If they just leave it to me, it'll be gone. That's what we have to believe. That's what we have to know. Father, I thank you for the time that you've given us to be together tonight. And I thank you for this story. This simple story that we've, we've heard since we were kids. But it's so much more than just a kid's story. I'm certainly glad that we teach it to our children. But it's more than a kid's story. It's for every single one of us. Because we are going to go through the big obstacles in life. We're going to go through the loss of loved ones. We're going to go through illness and disease. Those obstacles are going to be in our path. But we can know beyond a shadow of a doubt that we have a God that is bigger than any obstacle that the world can put in our way. Thank you, Father, for your promises. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for saving us. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.